The West Bloomfield Lakers last week Friday had a very big matchup. Arguably, arguably the biggest game in the state of Michigan was at West Bloomfield High School on senior night against Southfield A&T. And look, this, this was looking like it was going to be a back and forth matchup and it would be one that went down to the wire. That was not the case on Friday night. West Bloomfield taking care of business and coming away with a victory. Let's take a look back on their rousing win on Friday night against the Warriors. The Lakers finish off their regular season home schedule with a senior night rivalry game against the undefeated OAA White Division champion Southfield A&T Warriors. After a first drive, three and out, West Bloomfield gets an early scare on the Warriors punt return, but the Grim Reaper comes calling on the returning team. Lakers come away with a fumble and get a second chance inside their five. Shortly after, nothing doing for the Lakers or the Warriors on their next two drives, but just over halfway through the first quarter, Marquise Morris gets the football and takes it in for six. Lakers strike first for an early 7-0 lead. On the next drive, here comes the blue chip quarterback, Isaiah Marshall, and here come the edge rushers, Brandon Davis Swain and Jonathan Gabriel taking care of business on third down. That brings possession back to the home team and they get back at it in the air. Rick Nance finds the flash. Marquise Morris with a lightning bolt just threads the needle between the numbers. That sets up a Joshua Tate touchdown, number two on the season for 13. Hitting pay dirt for the first time since week number two. Lakers 14, Southfield a and zip. Now it's up to the Warriors offense. Can they answer and get on the board? With time ticking in the first, a Davier Burt run pushes Southfield near plus territory. Then spooky season strikes again. A bad snap over Zeke Marshall's head. Sets the Warriors way back inside their 15 yard line to end the first. And before the rain, lightning strikes twice. Another bad snap to start the second quarter, but a tremendous save by the quarterback as Zeke Marshall slips the ball out just in time to Zavi Bowman. Nothing doing for Southfield A&T, and they yet again have to give the ball up to the Lakers. And it wouldn't take long for them to get back on the ground and take it home. This time, it's a familiar face. Former Warrior Nigel Dunton crosses the goal line to turn this into a three-score lead. Lakers 21, Southfield A&T 0. Southfield at that point yet to be shut out since 2018 and had only given up 28 or more once on the season. But then Marquise Morris makes that twice. He gets his second rushing touchdown of the game and his third of the season. Lakers take a 28 to nothing lead into the half. On to half number two, the ball goes back to Southfield and they finally get things going, hitting the turf in the now rainy conditions to march up the field. But then it's the dynamic duo of Marshall and Tashi Braceful in the air. A beautiful grab puts the Warriors on the board. And with a two point conversion, it's now 28 to eight. Meanwhile, the Lakers move up the field but struggle to make headway in plus territory, setting up a Justin Ward 34-yard field goal. That would be the last time West Bloomfield got on the scoreboard that night, 31-8, late in the third. On to the final 12 minutes of football, and the Warriors aren't done fighting just yet. Isaiah Marshall finds Demario Quarles for the tutty to knock the lead down to 17. No good on this two-pointer, so it remains 31 to 14. And that, folks, is where it would stand the rest of the way. Save for a buzzer beater in garbage time to perhaps help out in the playoff points area. West Bloomfield takes care of business. Final score 31 to 20 as Southfield A&T finally meets its match in 2023. Yeah, fantastic matchup on Friday night. Surprisingly, a runaway game for West Bloomfield. This is the Southfield team that had taken care of business against some really tough opponents uh, throughout the season. Cast Tech and Clarkston, they had back-to-back. -back. Both, of course, were wins. A, a, a tough, hard-fought victory a few weeks ago against Birmingham Groves. And so you would ex have expected that this particular game was going to be a little bit more back-and-forth, maybe more of a defensive matchup uh, considering... Uh, considering what both of these teams bring to the table, or even a shootout considering the, the gameplay of West Bloomfield's offense, particularly in the receiving game and the prowess of Isaiah Marshall on Southfield's side. Joining me now to talk about last week's game and some other news from West Bloomfield Lakers alums is our color commentator, Matt Catoni from West Bloomfield Laker football broadcasts every Friday night on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Matt, it was very surprising to see what the Lakers had done on Friday night. Really a, a testament to the Lakers' execution in all three phases, especially that 28th zip first half. Yeah, really, it was a phenomenal game. I was thoroughly impressed by Coach Hilbert's game plan. 
but really you got to give credit where credit is due for the players executing. They came out, you could tell that they were really hungry to get that home playoff game. They recognized the moment that they were in, that they needed to get the win this week. And I was very impressed how they came out and just, you know, where it had the intensity that they needed. Yeah, right from the jump, the Lakers attacking Southfield a and and despite some uh, early issues in that first drive and even in that second drive not being able to, to get up the field, they, they were able to quickly diagnose what was happening uh, from Southfield's game planning defensively and start to really attack on the ground. That was the big surprise here is the Lakers running game outside the tackles had been really impressive all season long, but they have been struggling over the last several weeks to move the football a significant amount of space from inside the tackles. Something big happened on Friday night. They, they made a lot of progress going right at Southfield's D-line. Yeah, really, Southfield was... And a and T's defensive line was really phenomenal those first two drives and the Lakers couldn't really get anything going. But once Morris really broke off those first couple of runs, you could tell that, you know, they, they were starting to get things going and Southfield a and was, you know, falling back on their heels a little bit. Yeah, Marquise Morris was absolutely on fire on the ground. 11 carries for 134 yards and two touchdowns. By far his best performance of the season. His longest rush was a 48-yarder. And then Josh Tate also had 10 carries for 22 yards and a touchdown, making a lot of those key plays in the trenches. And Rick Nance again got, got involved in the run game. This was something Zach Hilber said was part of their sort of simplified game planning for the Oxford game and going forward was getting more of those designed quarterback runs. And especially with the way they were able to get outside the tackles and use Marquise Morris and Cam flowers on those jets and on those flies before the snap as sort of misdirection that really set Rick Nance up well to run the football. Yeah, really Southfield field a didn't have an answer for the misdirection that the Lakers offense threw at them. And that was really the biggest thing that surprised me. If you look on film, that's been, you know, kind of a hallmark of this West Bloomfield offense. You know, a lot of guys go into motion, and it's been that way for years. We've seen Samaj Morgan perform well in that role, and same with Donovan Edwards. So, really, it was just coming down to execution for this West Bloomfield offense, which is going to be important as they try and get, you know, rack up some wins in the playoffs. And we can talk as much as we want about the play of this offense, but the Lakers' defense was was even better, arguably, on Friday night than the offense was. And that's saying something for a team that dropped 31 points on a very stout Southfield a and defense. West Bloomfield's defense was on fire, again, getting to the quarterback, stifling that offensive line that's laden with seniors in Southfield and has a lot of talent up front also but also shutting down those wide receivers. Those defensive backs for West Bloomfield, in particular Bryce Rowe, had their best game of the season. Yeah, really, Bryce Rowe flashed the entire night. It was incredible to watch him. Every single time a ball went in his direction, it was almost like he was either batting it away or ultimately coming away with an interception he did early in the first half. But I was really impressed by the pressure that the defensive line was able to force. They stayed in a three-man front for majority of the game, but still Brandon Davis Swain and John Gabriel were both able to you know, really make an uh, really just feast back there and to make a name for themselves in the backfield. Yeah, and, and a ton of pressure from that Lakers defensive front all game long. The running game for Southfield A&T, they had a little bit more success on that front in the second half, and that helped them get on the board a couple of times. And, and then once they were able to make movement on that, they were able to get their pass game involved in the short game in plus territory and in the red zone for a couple of touchdowns, and then a late game touchdown uh, with time expiring. Uh, to no, to uh, Tashi Braceful again by Isaiah Marshall. But other than that, really great performance on the defensive side of the ball. Despite giving up 20 points, it really was more of a 14-point performance for Southfield a and with a garbage time touchdown. But that defensive front was fantastic, and those defensive backs even better on Friday night. That being said, Matt, still one more game left to play in this regular season, and they're going up against Oak Park. Oak Park struggling again in 2023, as they have in, in the past several years, really since the COVID year, but that doesn't mean that this is a throwaway game or an easy win for West Bloomfield, and with them ha already having two losses on the season, not winning the OAA Red Division in 2023, this game has big implications for where they're placed in the MHSAA playoffs. Yeah, you know, on paper, you know, it's a lesser opponent, but you can't really operate that way as a team, especially with the playoffs right around the corner. You can't overlook any opponent, especially considering that a loss to Oak Park this week really could prevent the Lakers from having a home playoff game. So I really expect the Lakers to come out and have a disciplined performance and do what they need to do to ensure a home playoff game. 
Yeah, Oak Park coming into this game 3-5 and five on the season. The wins against Troy Athens in overtime. Troy High School right after that in week four and a couple weeks ago. Uh, playing against Ferndale in a 22-9 victory. Last week, having lost to Seaholm, 22-42. They're going to want to answer back. This could also be a big game for Oak Park, who could finish the season with a 4-5 and five record, a noticeable improvement from years past under the legendary head coach, Greg Carter. A tough few years and looking to make a big impact in the final week of the season at home. That's a 6 o'clock kickoff. So an earlier game this week for the Lakers. You'll want to tune in a little bit earlier on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Much like today, you can also find the game on the West Bloomfield School District's Facebook page, facebook.com slash West Bloomfield Schools. On from Friday on to Saturday, it was a big weekend for Lakers all across the community. We'll take a look, Calvin, if you can pull up the first video. Samaj Morgan again getting on the board for the University of Michigan, he's quickly becoming a rising star. Not only getting a touchdown on Saturday against the against Indiana University, but playing a big role in that touchdown effort. Do we have that video, Calvin? All right, it appears we do not. We'll 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 uh, repost that for you another time, or or put a link up to to that touchdown on our Twitter page. It was a really exciting play by Samaj Morgan and, and Matt. If you can describe it to us, because you know, look, he's a smaller guy by wide receiver standards at the next level, but he put in a ton of effort to get that score. Yeah, really, Samaj offers something that Michigan doesn't necessarily have with its other receivers. You know, a lot of their other receivers, specifically Roman Wilson, are you know kind of a larger build, you know, bigger body route running technician type of guys. Samaj kind of offers, you know, that speed and space, quick cutting ability. And he showed that on his touchdown with the seven yard screen, made a few guys missed, but I was really impressed by the physicality and, you know, really refusing to go down, even ultimately, you know, that paying off and Trevor Keegan helping him get into the end zone. But it also goes into, you know, he has a lot of promise to him and the coaching staff is recognizing that after Michigan games recently, you know, they've been singing, he's a jolly good fellow after the game and the two players of the game have been leading the rendition of it. This week, Samaj Morgan was one of the two players that was tasked with leading the singing of the song. Yeah, and, and that play was really indicative of Samaj Morgan's game and really even more so his work ethic. If we take a look at it now, look at this. Gets the catch out on the near the sideline and he's getting met by a ton of defenders. We'll roll that back again for you. And, and he's in a lot of traffic there. And for uh, an undersized wide receiver, so to speak, to, to have him out in the boundary, fighting off a handful of, of Indiana receivers, some of the biggest guys on the field and pushing in for the end zone. I mean, the coaching staff's talked about this. This guy is an absolute workhorse. He works so hard and and at perfecting his game. And we've seen that a ton of a ton of times at West Bloomfield, making athletic moves and ultimately having that payoff with a score there. It was also a good weekend for Donovan Edwards, too. There's some controversy uh, about him not getting an opportunity to score a touchdown in close territory, and instead that going to Blake Corum, the senior running back. But ultimately, Donovan getting on the board for the first time this season also. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Me and my, my brother were laughing about that while watching the game. You could tell Edwards was, you know, he's wants that first rushing touchdown of the year. Ultimately, they call the timeout, and they sub him in for, or sub Blake Corum in for him. But he does ultimately get his first touchdown of the year. And I really expect things to start picking up for him, similar to last season where, you know, kind of got off to a slow start. And then as we got into big time play, his play picked up. Yeah, he, he's a big time playmaker. And, and the problem with having a big time playmaker like Donovan Edwards is also having another big time playmaker and the Heisman candidate in his own right in Blake Corum in the backfield, but the University of Michigan able to navigate that quite well. And both these players, you can see Blake Corum on civiccentertv.com, that video from Fox Sports over the weekend. All smiles seeing Donovan get into the end zone. And you know, also a great weekend for Trey Mosley at Michigan State. Dylan Tatum having some impact pl plays also in that highly disappointing loss to Rutgers on Saturday. But at the next level, uh, the Lakers continuing to make impact in the NFL. And one Laker back at it in the in the pros, Tristan Jackson now back with the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, Tristan Jackson has been elevated to the Vikings main roster. This is his second stint with the main roster this season, being elevated earlier in the season during their week three loss to the Chargers. He's likely to see a lot more playing time these upcoming weeks and really sort of fill out a role for this team as Justin Jefferson's on the IR. 
And uh, Tristan Jackson, of course, a wide receiver in the NFL, was a wide receiver at Michigan State. And then later on in his career, uh, he transferred to Syracuse for one year before going into the NFL as a wide receiver. But at West Bloomfield, one of the best quarterbacks they've ever had. His career passing guards between 2013 and 2015, 3,498. And uh, he's the second leading passer all time in West Bloomfield High School football history, just behind Bryce Beasley's 6,000 career yards. Uh, across his football career. And so Tristan Jackson, a big impact player just a few years back at West Bloomfield, continuing to make an impact at the next level. And so is uh, Matthew Judon with the New England Patriots. Unfortunately, you know, injuries ha have had, have, have taken their toll in, in past years and so have some contract issues too, but still playing great football for New England. Yeah. Judon was off to a terrific start to a season really, you know, really paying off what the money that he was given, you know, giving like repaying the faith that Belichick had in him. Unfortunately, it's under, they don't know when he's going to return from his injury, but he's battling through it and he hopes to play at some point before the end of the season. Plenty more news to be made at the next level for Lakers, both now already in the NFL. And look, we talked about Samaj, we talked about Donovan. Certainly we're looking at Donovan Edwards as being that next West Bloomfield Laker to make it to the next level and the bright futures ahead for the Lakers on the field already this season for West Bloomfield in 2023. The Lakers take on Oak Park on the road in Oak Park, their final game of the regular season, Friday, beginning at six o'clock. Our coverage will begin just a little bit after five o'clock on Civic Center TV on 89.3 Lakes FM, as well as on our social media, on our Facebook and our YouTube. If you're fans going out there to swamp out Season theme on Friday night is jersey. So go ahead and wear your jerseys, whether it's a West Bloomfield jersey or hey, maybe a Lions jersey. Five and one after their victory yesterday on the road in Tampa Bay. Thank you very much for joining us, Matt. Yep. Thank you for having me.